The future of the YouTube itself can be categorized into three different phases, I think. And the transitions between these phases depend on advancements of the fundamental sciences that gave birth to it in the first place, that is, optics, electronics, and computer sciences, and also advancement in other sciences that will merge with the YouTube of the future. Phase 1 would be mostly about the users rather than the content producers. You see, in the next 10 years, we will have moderate advancements in display technology, internet bandwidth, and computer sciences. So sure, there will be more 3D and 4K content on the YouTube, but that's not a big deal. Take a look at the YouTube structure today. It's quite primitive. I think it's even unfair. For example, let's say I like Ryan Higas and JK Film Comedy's channel and I've been a subscriber for years. With current YouTube structure, it doesn't matter how loyal and supportive I have been to these channels. It doesn't matter how many of their videos I have watched or shared or how long I have been a subscriber. In other words, there is no measure for how big of a fan I am. So if I leave a comment, the chance of me being seen by my favorite YouTuber is just the same as a total stranger who has came to that channel for the first time. There is no front seat, no reward mechanism for my long-time loyalty. And I think that's going to change. Now this might be done by involving something like bitcoins or defining some fellowship hierarchy. The other change I will see in phase one will be a more interactive fluid layout. The first page of the YouTube will be just less clunky and more like magazine covers, something more artistic and also more functional. And by the end of phase one, I think something interesting will be added to YouTube. An option for equal fame opportunity. An option that I like to call fame gamble. So in the future, when you're uploading your videos to the YouTube, there will be private, unlisted, public, and then fame gamble options available. This means that if you are a certified user and you want to grow an audience for your channel, with this option, your video has a chance to be on the front page of the YouTube on the fame gamble section without having to be a good video. The fame gamble option will bridge the bottom of the YouTube fame hierarchy to the top to motivate amateur content producers. So you don't have to go around and campaign for your videos. The YouTube of the future will do that for you if you're a lucky, eligible user. It's just like a lottery for winning fame. That's all it is. 20 years from now, the infrastructure of the internet will be significantly improved. There will be much more cloud computing power and the machine learning will be flourished. In phase two, we will see more sophisticated editing tools available online. We will see more immersive and viral video format categories and video format generators appearing. For example, YouTube will be able to take your video and make something like Neon Cat video out of it. And you will have all these online editing tools to make your video look not only funny and cartoony, but also even playable like video games. By end of this second phase, Augmented reality will have become mature enough to give birth to another interesting industry that is mostly appealing to the ladies, and that is digital cosmetics. That's right, people will pay good money to get their favorite digital makeup. And just like the fashion industry today, there will be these famous digital studios that you can go to to have your facial expressions recorded in 3D. And then there will be these famous artists like Michel Fons of the future that will paint you a digital cosmetic mask. So you can augment this 3D semi-transparent mask in your video to look perfectly photoshopped in every single frame of your video. In the third phase, the hardware of the photography will change itself. There will be flat optics, lightweight cameras, and more sophisticated recording techniques. The cameras start to analyze the scene and somewhat understand what they are recording. So at this point, the acquisition and the compression has changed altogether. And in fact, that's what we work on here at MIT. This doesn't mean that the old cameras will be totally thrown out of the window, but there will be cameras and camera networks that can do just so much better and so much more than today's camera for YouTube. In this phase, tele-existence and YouTube avatars will be widespread. So accessing, recording, and presenting your experiences and your thoughts will become much easier. For example, today you need a whole crew to put together a reality show. In the future, a lot of these processes can be taken care of with robotics and machine learning. So in other words, routine filmmaking will become automized. A tangible but very primitive example that I can give is the Facebook flashback app that you saw last year. 
where the computer put together a short video of your Facebook pictures. Now imagine 30 years, 40 years down the road when the robots are filming you and a computer is editing you and the videos have multiple layers, interactive layers recorded with them. After phase 3, I think it's really difficult to talk about them now, but after phase 3 I think we will have the rise of robotics that will merge with what is by then a blurred and saturated concept of YouTube. So these two will merge and they will change the way we look at the world and at ourselves. So I think eventually the YouTube will become like this white large magical space where you can see yourself in it, you can see your shortcomings and defects in it, but you can also project yourself through that space, to the world, the way you want it to.